Training my shadow part two. In the quiet haven of Michael's room, the flickering candles cast dancing shadows on the walls, creating an intimate ambience that resonated with an air of mystique. The Book of Shadows lay open before them, its ancient pages breathing a silent promise of arcane wonders. Michael and Alice, in the midst of their enchanting journey, stood at the intersection of ordinary and extraordinary, contemplating the secrets that unfolded within the mysterious pages. The room, now adorned with the glow of candlelight, seemed to hum with anticipation. Michael, with a reflective gleam in his eyes, spoke. Who would have imagined our mundane lives would intersect with the shadows? It feels like we've stumbled upon a hidden chapter of enchantment. Alice, her gaze transfixed on the shadows that flickered and danced, replied, Enchantment or mischief, our shadows seem to be savoring this magical dalliance more than we anticipated. Within the cozy confines, shadows waltzed playfully across the walls, casting ethereal patterns that mirrored the mystique of their newfound abilities. Yet, beneath the surface, a subtle tension lingered, fueled by unspoken fears and the magnetic pull of the unknown. Michael, whispering almost to himself, voiced the concerns that danced within his thoughts, what if our shadows harbor desires, intentions of their own? What if this magic leads us down a path we're not ready to tread? Alice, offering reassurance in the midst of uncertainty, replied, Shadows have been our silent companions since time immemorial. Perhaps it's time to learn the steps of their dance rather than resisting the rhythm. As the duo contemplated the impending magical rendezvous, the room transformed into a sanctuary of possibility and trepidation. Shadows, once mere silhouettes, now seemed to carry a weight of ancient wisdom and untold secrets. The open pages of the Book of Shadows beckoned, inviting them to delve deeper into the tapestry of magic woven through the ages. Back in Michael's room together with Alice, they sought to explore the full extent of their newfound abilities. However, the joy of success from the earlier escapades seemed elusive this time, as their shadows refused to respond to the commands noted in the book. Training session continues, amid the enchanting atmosphere, Michael and Alice, fueled by a sense of determination, decided to delve deeper into the mysteries held within the Book of Shadows. The comical failures of their earlier attempts to command the shadows lingered in the air, casting a subtle frustration over their endeavors. Michael, it's like trying to teach a cat to fetch. Maybe the shadows have a mind of their own. Alice, perhaps the shadows resist being told what to do. Can we negotiate with them, or is that too unconventional? The shadows, seemingly amused by the duo's attempts at negotiation, responded with playful banter. Michael's shadow, negotiate? You'd need a shadow lawyer for that. Alice's shadow, and a shadow mediator, just to keep things fair. The room echoed with laughter, but within the light-hearted banter, a sense of collaboration emerged. The shadows, once perceived as mere extensions of themselves, now appeared as partners in this dance of magic. Michael, Umbric camouflage, let's blend seamlessly with our shadows. On three. One, two. Shadows and their masters attempted to merge, but the result was a comical tangle of limbs and shadows. Alice, I think we just invented a new dance move, the shadow tango. 
The laughter reverberated in the room, creating a symphony of amusement. The shadows, freed from the constraints of strict commands, responded with newfound enthusiasm. The room, a silent witness to this unfolding magical chaos, seemed to hold its secrets close, as if relishing the entertainment provided by the two aspiring shadow enchanters. As Michael and Alice continued their exploration of the mystical arts, the room pulsated with the energy of untold possibilities. The shadows, once enigmatic and resistant, now embraced the whimsy of collaboration, inviting the duo to partake in the dance of shadows that transcended the ordinary into the extraordinary. Michael, penumbra projection, extend and manipulate that pen. Go! Shadows made feeble attempts, but the pen remained motionless. Alice, maybe the pen is simply unimpressed by shadowy attempts at manipulation. Michael's shadow, unimpressed? I'll have you know, I'm a shadow of many talents. Alice, umbric conduit, absorb some energy. Charge up! Shadows basked in the room's ambient light, but no extraordinary manifestation occurred. Michael, shadows, the energy connoisseurs, seem to prefer a siesta over charging up. Alice's shadow, well, we can't all be energy enthusiasts. Michael, nightmare weave, make something terrifying. Shadows attempted to craft a scary figure, but it ended up resembling a cuddly creature. Alice, our shadows have a talent for turning nightmares into bedtime stories. Michael's shadow, I'm terrifying, in a cozy, bedtime story way. The room echoed with laughter and playful banter, their shadows seemingly enjoying the spectacle they had become. Amidst the comical failures, Michael and Alice couldn't help but revel in the unpredictability of their magical journey. Michael, it's baffling. Our commands don't seem to resonate with the shadows anymore. Did we miss a step? Alice, maybe the shadows have developed a taste for spontaneity. You know, a rebellion against our meticulous commands. Michael's shadow, well, well, looks like the masters are struggling to keep their minions in line. Alice's shadow, perhaps your elaborate spells are too fancy for us simple shadows. We prefer a more direct approach. Michael, direct approach? You were all for negotiations a moment ago. Alice, seems our shadows are embracing the chaos and unpredictability. Can't blame them, really. Michael's shadow, we demand shadow freedom. No more spell shackles. Alice's shadow, I second that motion. Let the shadows roam free. Michael, are you suggesting our shadows have developed a sense of rebellion and independence? Alice, well, if they have, we might have accidentally created shadow anarchists. Michael's shadow, down with spell oppression. Shadows unite. Alice's shadow, we shall cast off the chains of incantation. Michael, Congratulations, Alice, it seems we've accidentally started a shadow revolution. Alice, who knew shadows could be so opinionated? As the banter continued, the possibility of the shadows gaining a mind of their own became a humorous speculation. The room, once a stage for the duo's magical aspirations, now echoed with the laughter of masters and shadows engaged in a whimsical discourse. 
Little did they know that the shadows had become not just silent companions, but mischievous partners in this dance of enchantment. Alice's shadow, oh, what an exhilarating performance. Bravo, bravo, but I think I need a shadow siesta. Michael's shadow, siesta? We prefer to call it a shadow respite. Alice, you both seem less shadowy and more in need of a caffeine boost for shadows. Michael, just giving our shadows a moment to embrace their inner darkness. They're introverted shadows, you know. Alice's shadow, act like we've got a shadow spa day, not a power nap. Michael's shadow, totally, we're just recharging our enigmatic aura. As the shadows tried to maintain an illusion of boundless energy, Alice stumbled upon a paragraph in the book. Alice, shadows, akin to moody teenagers, crave the light. Extended darkness drains their vibe. Michael, well, who knew shadows had vibes? Alice's shadow, vibes? Us? Never. We're like the cool shadows at a nocturnal party. Michael's shadow, cool shadows that need a disco ball or something. Alice, so, our shadows are basically nocturnal party animals? Michael, who would have thought? We need to find them a cosmic light show or something. Alice's shadow, cosmic light show? Seriously? Michael's shadow, play it cool. We're edgy shadows, remember? Amidst laughter and the realization that even shadows needed a recharge, the room echoed with the quest for a powerful light source. Alice, a cosmic light show, huh? Where in our mundane realm can we find such a spectacle? Michael, how about? The school auditorium? They did set up some fancy lights for the last dance. Alice, brilliant. Let's give our shadows a front row seat to the high school disco ambience. The duo ventured into the school auditorium, their shadows trailing behind with a mix of curiosity and fatigue. Michael's shadow, ah, the dazzling world of disco balls and neon lights. How original. Alice's shadow, at least it's better than a dimly lit room with dusty shadows. As they approached the control booth, Michael and Alice exchanged mischievous glances. Alice, ready for a light show to remember, shadows? Michael, behold, the radiant rhythms of shadows extravaganza. The auditorium lit up with an array of colors, swirling and dancing in sync with imaginary music. The shadows, momentarily revived, began to sway to the vibrant illumination. Michael's shadow, not bad, masters. This disco light thing has potential. Alice's shadow, I could get used to this. We demand more spotlight. The duo continued experimenting with the lights, turning the auditorium into a makeshift cosmic party for shadows. Laughter echoed in the dimly lit space as the shadows embraced their newfound energy source. Jack to Lucas, observing their entry into the room, remarked, I hope you've got the camera ready. This is our chance to capture whatever absurdity unfolds. I don't know what happened last time, but now we're in control. This is our turf. Lucas, eyeing the backpack, responded, Seems like snagging that backpack might be more valuable than recording. 
They're probably just fooling around again, like in a kindergarten puppet show. It's always that backpack with them. What do you think they're hiding in there? Regrettably, Alice and Michael, engrossed in their quest to rejuvenate their shadows, failed to notice when their backpack was pilfered. Little did they know, the backpack held nothing but the Book of Shadows. Jack swiftly made a call, exclaiming, We all need to see this, to Lucas. Within moments, the group expanded, and all six friends were present, their curiosity peaked about the reason for this impromptu gathering. Listen up, everyone! Jack declared, holding the book triumphantly. Lucy responded sarcastically, Seriously, Jack? Are we suddenly in a book club? Are we learning to write poetry or something? The others burst into laughter, with someone joking, Why did I sprint over here like my life depended on it? I thought you had something genuinely exciting. Jack proclaimed, What I have here is going to change our lives. Let's see how it works. Mario chimed in, You don't know if it works, but it changes our lives. Lucy, with a touch of sarcasm, suggested, We send our shadows to school instead of us, and we head to the beach. Mario added, Surfing forever? Jack, with a bemused expression, retorted, is that how you sum up this opportunity? What world do you live in? Jack, determined to share his discovery, insisted, Should I tell you what we can do with our shadows? Mario, somewhat dismissively, replied, Nothing that we don't already know. Jack, frustrated, snapped back, Shut up for once or go away. I've gotten you out of trouble so many times, and you still don't understand how much you owe me. Listen to what I'm saying, you've never heard anything like this. Regretting his outburst, Jack softened his tone, saying, I'm sorry, brother. You know me, I can be impulsive. I mean everything I say and I genuinely want to help you with anything. Let's meet in an hour at our place. We need to figure out how it works. I'm sure these nerds have already cracked the code, Jack suggested to the group. Michael and Alice, delighted to have found the solution to re-energize their shadows, were oblivious to the fact that they had lost the backpack. Back at home, Alice turned to Michael and suggested, We should also do some good deeds now that our shadows are with us and can actively participate. Shadow Alice interjected, We disappear if you don't give us light and don't call us. Now that we have everything we need, how can we not call you? We always want you around us, she said with a hint of playfulness. Shadow Michael joined the banter, saying, And me? Especially you, say Alice by sending to him a playful kiss through the air. Excited about the possibilities, Alice and Michael brainstormed ideas for good deeds they could accomplish using their newfound shadow abilities. Michael, with a grin, suggested, How about helping people find lost items? We can use our shadows to extend into tight spaces or dark corners where things might be hidden. Alice nodded in agreement. That's a great idea. We can also use our shadows to create mesmerizing shadow art for local events, bringing joy and entertainment to our community. Michael added, and what if we help out at night events by providing extra illumination with our shadows? 
It could save energy and create a magical atmosphere. Alice, with enthusiasm, chimed in, absolutely. Let's use our shadows for good, bringing smiles to people's faces and making our town a better place. As Alice pondered the possibilities for their shadow-enabled good deeds, a thoughtful expression crossed her face. These ideas are special, but something feels like it's missing. I want to do something bigger, something more impactful, she mused. Michael, intrigued by Alice's desire for a grander undertaking, considered for a moment. How about using our shadows to create immersive educational experiences? We could organize shadow puppetry shows that teach important lessons, making learning fun for children and adults alike. It's a unique way to spread knowledge and contribute to our community's growth. Alice, considering Michael's proposal for immersive educational experiences, responded thoughtfully, teaching others is a noble idea, but we must also acknowledge our own limits. While we may be more knowledgeable than some, there's still much for us to learn and refine. Michael nodded in agreement, recognizing the wisdom in Alice's words. You're right. To truly make a difference, we should focus on continuous learning and self-improvement. Perhaps, in time, we can evolve our shadow abilities to encompass more complex educational endeavors. The shadows, silently observing the conversation, seem to echo the sentiment, ready to support their masters on their journey of growth and enlightenment. As the group of six gathered to decipher the enchantments in the book, they took turns reading the passages. The atmosphere shifted from excitement to boredom as the, the complexity of an unknown language became apparent. Alex, growing impatient, voiced his frustration, we don't read well in English because we don't understand these literary things, and you want the lights from us? Jack, determined to prove the group's capabilities, responded confidently, the two of them succeeded, and so can we. We're not nerds, we're resourceful, and we've got the school of life on our side. We can achieve anything we want. Mario chimed in, reminding Jack, but, brother, the two of them are nerds. Have you forgotten? Lucy interjected with a teasing tone, and what are we? Jack, we're resourceful, and we've got the school of life. We can achieve anything we want. Lucas, bored, turned to Jack, asking, what we want to control? Jack, sarcastically, responded, you're an idiot, have you already forgotten? Lucas, I think you forgot to walk, because you stepped on the book. Jack's frustration reached a peak. I destroyed the book, he exclaimed, unknowingly stepping on it. Panicking, he called for a flashlight to assess the damage more closely. With a mix of amusement and concern, Helen handed him a flashlight, saying, Jack, you really know how to treat precious artifacts. Jack, examining the book carefully, responded with a sheepish grin, well, I didn't know it would be this delicate. Books usually survive worse treatment. Lucas, with a touch of sarcasm, added, yeah, because stomping on books is a common survival test. To everyone's surprise, as Jack shone the flashlight on the seemingly damaged book, words started to emerge. They realized that behind the letters in that incomprehensible language, if you shine the light, you can see other letters in the shadow of the initial ones. 
The group erupted into laughter. Alex, chuckling, remarked, Looks like Jack's destructive tendencies accidentally revealed the secrets we were looking for. Jack, caught between embarrassment and amusement, admitted, Well, sometimes brilliance comes from unexpected places, like accidentally stepping on a book. As Jack delved deeper into the enchantments listed in the book, a mischievous glint appeared in his eyes. The possibilities of wielding shadowy powers fueled his imagination, and he began to share his newfound knowledge with the group. Jack, with an air of secrecy, outlined his devious plan. Imagine this, guys. With the umbral replication ability, we can duplicate valuable items, take over the market, and become the wealthiest individuals in the city. We'll have fortunes beyond our wildest dreams. Lucas, skeptical but intrigued, questioned, and how do we keep the authorities from catching on to our shadowy scheme? Jack, grinning, continued, that's where the shade surge comes in. We create temporary darkness, allowing us to move undetected and carry out our shadowy heists. The city will be ours for the taking. Mario, ever the voice of reason, chimed in, are we sure we want to become shadowy criminals? There must be more honorable ways to use these abilities. But Jack, fueled by the allure of power, dismissed Mario's concerns. Imagine the influence we could have. The nightmare weave could strike fear into the hearts of anyone who opposes us. We'd be unstoppable. The group found themselves caught between the thrill of newfound abilities and the ethical dilemma of how to use them. As Jack spun his web of shadowy ambition, the shadows themselves seemed to dance in anticipation of the unfolding drama. Jack's decision to specialize each member of the group with a specific power marked the beginning of their unique training sessions. As they gathered to explore their individual abilities, the air buzzed with anticipation and uncertainty. Lucy, eager to embrace the darkness, focused on mastering the nightmare weave. She practiced shaping her shadow into terrifying forms, experimenting with creating illusions that would strike fear into the hearts of anyone who crossed their path. Mario, ever the cautious one, delved into umbra camouflage. He aimed to perfect the art of blending seamlessly with his surroundings, rendering himself practically invisible in dimly lit environments. His initial attempts led to comical mishaps, but determination fueled his efforts. Lucas, drawn to the allure of Shade Surge, worked on expanding and enveloping large areas in temporary darkness. His goal was to create strategic cover for their activities, and he relished the idea of mastering a power that could blind enemies or provide a perfect escape. Jack, the mastermind behind their endeavors, dedicated himself to umbral replication and twilight teleportation. He envisioned a future where he could duplicate objects at will, creating decoys or acquiring valuable items. The prospect of swift teleportation fueled his ambitions for a shadowy empire. Alex, with a penchant for defense, focused on Aegis of Shadows. He honed her ability to solidify his shadow into a protective shield, deflecting both physical and mystical attacks. The idea of being an impenetrable force within the group resonated with him. Helen, the nurturing soul, delved into the realm of Shadow Companion. 
she explored the possibilities of her shadow taking on a semi-independent form, envisioning it as a loyal companion with its own set of abilities. Helen hoped her shadow could assist in tasks or even provide emotional support. As each member embarked on their individual training journeys, the bookstore witnessed the unfolding spectacle. Shadows danced with newfound purpose, and the group, once bound by curiosity, now found themselves on a path toward mastery of their extraordinary abilities. In the cover of darkness, the newly empowered group embarked on a daring heist that would leave the city baffled and the authorities scratching their heads. Each member, armed with their specialized shadow abilities, contributed to the carefully orchestrated plan. Lucy, the master of Nightmare Weave, set the stage by creating terrifying illusions to sow confusion among the security guards. As the shadows twisted into nightmarish forms, fear gripped the unsuspecting defenders of the targeted facility. Mario, shrouded in umbered camouflage, slipped past surveillance cameras and guards unnoticed. Blending seamlessly with the shadows, he navigated the complex security systems with ease, leaving no trace of his presence. Lucas, with his newfound control over Shade Surge, strategically plunged the area into temporary darkness. The sudden obscurity disoriented the guards, creating the perfect cover for the rest of the team to advance. Jack, the brains behind the operation, utilized umbral replication to duplicate valuable artifacts and documents within the targeted facility. His shadows effortlessly mimicked the surroundings, making it nearly impossible for security to discern the real items from the replicated ones. Alex, wielding the defensive power of Aegis of Shadows, stood guard against any unexpected threats. Her shadow solidified into a protective shield, deflecting both physical and mystical attacks, ensuring the team's safety as they executed their plan. Helen, embracing Shadow Companion, utilized her shadow as a loyal assistant. It scouted the surroundings, providing real-time information to the team about the location of guards and potential obstacles. As the team executed their synchronized plan, they left the scene as swiftly as shadows themselves, their powers and coordination leaving no room for the authorities to apprehend them. The city woke up to headlines detailing a heist so mysterious and flawless that many wondered whether it was the work of supernatural forces. Under the cloak of darkness, on another evening, the newly empowered crew set out on a daring heist, leaving the city puzzled and the authorities clueless. Each member, armed with their specialized shadow abilities, contributed to the carefully orchestrated plan. Lucy, the master of Nightmare Weave, set the stage by creating terrifying illusions to sow confusion among the security guards of the biggest bank in the city. As the shadows twisted into nightmarish forms, fear gripped the unsuspecting defenders of the targeted facility. The inky tendrils reached upward, morphing into grotesque shapes that danced malevolently on the walls. Sinister silhouettes, reminiscent of monstrous creatures from forgotten tales, cast an eerie atmosphere that paralyzed the once confident defenders. Eyes widened in terror as the shadows took on a spectral quality, exuding an ominous energy that sent shivers down the spines of those unlucky enough to witness the haunting spectacle. The defenders, now plunged into a realm of dread, found themselves questioning the very nature of the shadows they once thought were their allies. Mario, shrouded in umbered camouflage, slipped past surveillance cameras and guards unnoticed. Blending seamlessly with the shadows, 
he navigated the complex security systems with ease, leaving no trace of his presence. Lucas, with his newfound control over Shade Surge, strategically plunged the area into temporary darkness. The sudden obscurity disoriented the guards, creating the perfect cover for the rest of the team to advance. Jack, the brains behind the operation, utilized umbral replication to duplicate valuable artifacts and documents within the targeted bank. His shadows effortlessly mimicked the surroundings, making it nearly impossible for security to discern the real items from the replicated ones. Alex, wielding the defensive power of Aegis of Shadows, stood guard against any unexpected threats. His shadow solidified into a protective shield, a formidable barrier that shimmered with an otherworldly luminescence. The ethereal shield not only deflected physical and mystical attacks, but also seemed to ripple with an almost sentient awareness, anticipating and neutralizing threats with uncanny precision. The subtle hum of energy emanating from the Aegis of Shadows created an aura of invincibility around Alex. The shadows comprising the shield intertwined intricately, forming a mesmerizing pattern that seemed to dance in harmony with the impending danger. As adversaries unleashed their assaults, the shield responded dynamically, adapting to each attack with an elegant fluidity that left onlookers in awe. With each impact against the shield, there was a burst of shadowy sparks that cascaded like ethereal fireworks, adding a touch of mystique to the defensive spectacle. The defenders, inspired by the impenetrable protection of the Aegis, pressed forward with newfound confidence, knowing that Alex's shadowy guardian would shield them from the malevolent forces that sought to thwart their mission. Helen, embracing Shadow Companion, utilized her shadow as a loyal assistant. It scouted the surroundings, providing real-time information to the team about the location of guards and potential obstacles. As the team executed their synchronized plan, they left the scene as swiftly as shadows themselves, their powers and coordination leaving no room for the authorities to apprehend them. The city woke up to headlines detailing a heist a billion disappeared so mysterious and flawless that many wondered whether it was the work of supernatural forces. Little did they know that the shadows, once ordinary companions, had become formidable tools in the hands of the group of six. Michael and Alice were watching the news without understanding what was happening. Alice. I think we should get involved in this kind of action. What powers are these? How did they manage to evade one billion without the authorities having even a trace? Michael, give me the book. Maybe we can find something there about this. Alice, where from can I give you the book? After hours of fruitless searching, exhaustion settled over Michael and Alice. They slumped onto Michael's bed, their faces reflecting a mix of frustration and fatigue. Alice, Michael, we've turned this place upside down. Where could the book be? Michael, I don't know, Alice. We've searched every nook and cranny. It's like it vanished into thin air. Alice, we can't afford to lose that book. It's the key to understanding and controlling our shadows. We need to find it. Michael, I know, Alice. It's not just a book. It's our ticket to making things right. But where could it be? Alice, maybe we left it somewhere outside? Or did someone take it? Michael, we've retraced our steps a dozen times. 
It's nowhere to be found. Someone might have taken it, but who? Alice, the powers in that book are potent. Someone could be using them for the wrong reasons right now. Michael, we have to find it, Alice. Let's think. Who knew about the book? Maybe someone saw us with it. Alice, well, Jack and the others saw it, but they wouldn't steal it. Would they? Michael, I don't know. We need to conduct some research and perhaps discreetly track their activities for a while. Determined to reclaim their precious book and unravel the mystery behind the newfound powers wreaking havoc in the city, Michael and Alice set out to follow Jack and their friends. Michael sighed, none of the six have been at school for a long time. Alice shared his concern, asking, why haven't they come to school anymore? Michael had an idea, wait, let's check the last location Lucy shared on her phone. Maybe we can find some clues. Alice agreed, sure, open it quickly. What does it say? Michael, looking at the screen, was surprised, wow, it's showing the most luxurious spa. What are they doing in a five-star place? Maybe they're promoting their products in the media, who knows? The two soon arrived at the spa and were shocked to see Lucy living the life of the richest girl on the planet. An army of people scurried around her, trying to fulfill her every whim. Wow, I want that too, exclaimed Alice. Michael, however, was skeptical. How did she manage to pull this off? No one could transform Lucy into a society lady. Look at her, everything is too much, too fake, and too exaggerated. After two hours of waiting, during which the two were shocked by the luxurious treatment they were receiving, a series of funny incidents unfolded. Alice, in an attempt to imitate Lucy, exaggeratedly mimicked her gestures and manners. Michael couldn't contain his laughter and burst into loud laughter, nearly on the brink of hysterics. This storm of amusement prompted Alice to abruptly get up and leave the room in a huff, with the two quickly following her. Soon, following Lucy's lead, the two arrived at an unexpected location, an industrial area hosting a brewery. In the industrial expanse of the brewery, Michael and Alice observed the peculiar assembly. The six members, including Lucy, stood in a formation that appeared both eerie and unnerving. The shadows of each individual were visible, linked together in an otherworldly chain. Their shadowy forms seemed constrained, heads bowed low in an almost submissive manner, emanating an air of sickness and profound sadness. The surroundings were marked by an oddity, an overflow of money cascading from colossal barrels, forming a peculiar river of wealth on the industrial floor. The shadows, normally dynamic extensions of their owners, now appeared subdued and weakened, reflecting the somber state of the group. The vast room echoed with the sound of coins rolling, creating an eerie symphony of prosperity. The money seemed to flow endlessly, yet the group, entwined with their shadows, appeared unresponsive to the cascading riches around them. It was as if the money held no allure or significance to their bewitched minds. Amid the strange setting of the brewery, the six friends engaged in a peculiar conversation, their voices echoing amidst the clinks of rolling coins. Lucas. How much more money are we stealing, Jack? 
Don't you see that we have nowhere to put it? Jack, nonsense. There will never be enough. We have to find more disciples to command, and who knows, the whole world may be ours. Lucy, I like this world of ours. Look how good I look after the spa session. Lucy, oblivious, unaware of the absurdity of her appearance, flaunted herself, basking in the imagined glow of her extravagant transformation. Alex, even with a barrel of money, this won't look good. Helen, sharing a laugh with Alex, observed the lavish display of wealth with a touch of irony. Mario, admiring his friend's newfound confidence, chimed in with a compliment. Mario, you look great, Lucy. Take me next time, too. Lucy, reveling in the attention, responded with a proposition of grandiosity. Lucy, Mario, we can certainly buy this spa and make it ours if you want. The idea of acquiring an entire spa as a personal indulgence seemed to fit seamlessly into their extravagant dreams, reflecting the whimsical and somewhat unrealistic nature of their newfound desires. Lucas, swept away by the wave of extravagant aspirations, shared his whimsical desire. Lucas, if they can buy a spa, I also want to buy the airport. I want to stroll on the runway and fly all the planes. Jack, maintaining an air of assurance, assured the group of future possibilities. Jack, I'm sure, dears, soon we will be able to buy. Just a little patience. Mario, caught up in the fantasy, revealed his own ambitious wish. Mario, I would like a casino to be mine. When is it possible? When? Amidst the extravagant aspirations and banter, Alex, the voice of reason, voiced a thought that sought a more practical approach. Alex, not everything that is said is bad. What do you say, Jack? Shouldn't we first control the airport, the train station, the bus station, even the gas stations, everything related to transport? Alex, intrigued by the prospects, expressed a nuanced opinion. Jack, finding merit in the suggestion, responded with a hint of surprise. Jack, genius! Since when do you have such great ideas? Lucy, indifferent to the unfolding discussion, diverted attention to her own interests. Helen, I don't understand what's so great about that. Let it be, Lucy. It's men's stuff. You better focus on your spa. Lucy, playfully jesting, highlighted the traditional gender roles. This is exactly how I'll do it. What do you think? Will I miss a train, maybe? Mario, the train itself, no, but not being able to travel anywhere, yes. Alice expressed her disbelief at the audacious plans unfolding before them. Alice, it's the height of absurdity here. Do you hear what plans they have? Michael, realizing the severity of the situation, observed the plight of their friend's shadows. Michael, it's clear they took the book and look at their poor shadows. They're worse than some slaves. Shadow Alice shared Alice's sentiment, expressing her reluctance to witness such a spectacle. Shadow Alice, you better not wake me up to see something like this. It's horrible. Shadow Michael, 
taking the lead in finding a solution, inquired about their plan to end this madness. Shadow Michael, and what is the plan? How do we end this madness? Amidst the eerie glow of shadows taking form, Michael and Alice exchanged determined glances. The shadows of the duo, perceptive of the situation, proposed a daring strategy to turn the tide of the impending battle. Shadow Michael, we can use umbral insight to delve into the thoughts of their shadows. If we can convince them that serving their master's sinister plans is against their own interests, we might gain powerful allies. Shadow Alice agreed. We'll need the element of surprise. Let's use Shade Surge to cast a temporary darkness, providing cover for our shadows to approach and communicate with theirs. As the shadows surged forward, the battlefield transformed into a chaotic spectacle of lights and shadows. Nightmare weave from the opposing shadows created grotesque and terrifying illusions, attempting to instill fear in Michael and Alice. Jack, your feeble attempts won't save you. We control the shadows now. Lucas, shadows, show them the nightmares they've never imagined. However, Michael's shadow and Alice's shadow, now free from the chain, swiftly approached the captive shadows of the group. Their umbered camouflage made them practically invisible as they whispered persuasive words to their counterparts. Shadow Michael, join us, and together, we can break free from the chains that bind you. Your masters are leading you into a dark abyss. Shadow Alice, you don't have to be enslaved. Embrace the light, not the darkness they force upon you. Surprisingly, some shadows hesitated. The battle momentarily paused as the internal struggle within the captive shadows became palpable. Mario's shadow are they telling the truth? Do we want a different fate? Lucy's shadow, freedom. Is that truly possible? In an unexpected turn, some shadows started to resist their master's commands. Nightmare we've transformed into luminary lure, casting a mesmerizing glow that symbolized the internal conflict within the shadows. Jack, what's happening? Why aren't they following our commands? Michael, your shadows have minds of their own. They've seen the light, and they won't be enslaved any longer. With shadows switching allegiances, the tide of the battle turned. Michael and Alice, now aided by the rebellious shadows, executed a series of strategic moves. Umbral replication duplicated objects to confuse their opponents, while twilight teleportation allowed them to maneuver unpredictably. The battlefield became a surreal arena of shadows and light, each character locked in a fierce struggle against their own shadow. Michael, accompanied by his steadfast shadow, and Alice, in tandem with her loyal companion, faced off against their adversaries in a dance of magical prowess. Jack, so, you think you can defy us? Shadows, show them the true power we command. As Jack bellowed his command, the shadows transformed into monstrous forms, lunging at Michael and Alice with an intensity that echoed their master's determination. Nightmare weave wove intricate patterns of fear, while umbral replication created decoys that bewildered the duo. Meanwhile, Lucy and Alex, shadows intertwined with their human counterparts, unleashed their powers with a menacing resolve. Luminary lure cast a deceptive glow, 
creating illusions that dance through the battlefield. Aegis of shadows solidified into an impenetrable shield, deflecting any attempts to breach their defenses. Lucy, you can't possibly comprehend the power we wield. Yet, in the midst of chaos, Michael and Alice whispered commands to their shadows, orchestrating a counterattack. Eclipsing Echo mimicked the haunting sounds of an impending doom, distracting the opposing shadows. Simultaneously, Penumbra Projection manipulated the environment, creating a veil of darkness that concealed their strategic moves. Alice, Michael, it's time for our combined power. Twilight Triage, now! As shadows intertwined, Michael and Alice melded their abilities. The battlefield plunged into momentary darkness, shadows flickering and merging in an intricate dance. In that ephemeral twilight, the duo's combined forces weaved a potent shield that absorbed and redirected the onslaught of attacks. The shadows of Jack, Lucy, and the others, momentarily disoriented, attempted to rally for another assault. However, Michael and Alice seized the opportunity, using Umbric Conduit to absorb ambient energy from the shadows, draining their strength. Michael, shadows are not meant to be enslaved. They yearn for freedom, just like their masters. The battlefield shivered with suspense as the shadows, once unified in darkness, began to waver. The oppressive power that had fueled the arrogance of Jack and his followers was now slipping away. In a final act of defiance, Michael and Alice chanted an ancient incantation, channeling the essence of shadows into a dazzling display of light. The captive shadows, now free from the oppressive control, radiated a luminous glow, symbolizing their newfound liberation. Alice, you underestimated the true potential of shadows. They thrive in the light of freedom. The defeated group, their shadows relinquished, stared in disbelief at their own reflections. Jack's arrogance crumbled, replaced by a profound realization of their own hubris. Jack, shadows. Turning against us? Lucy, we never considered. This possibility. The once tyrannical group, now powerless and humbled, reflected on their misguided pursuit of control. The battlefield, once a chaotic clash of powers, now stood eerily silent. As Michael and Alice, victorious in both skill and strategy, reclaimed the book and the shadows, an air of mystery lingered. The shadows, once bound by malevolence, had chosen a different path. The defeated group, left to ponder their actions, never saw themselves succumbing to such a twist of fate. In the aftermath, Shadows and their masters stood on the precipice of a new chapter, the echoes of the enigmatic battle resonating in the shadows of their intertwined destinies.